Okay, welcome to the second module of nephrotic syndrome. In the first video lecture, we have discussed about the pathophysiology of nephrotic syndrome and we have discussed how the pathophysiology guides the clinical feature of nephrotic syndrome. In the same way, now we are going to use the knowledge of pathophysiology of nephrotic syndrome and understand about the complication of nephrotic syndrome. But before understanding the complication of nephrotic syndrome, you have to understand that complication of nephrotic syndrome can be either due to the disease itself, which means the nephrotic syndrome producing complication as well as it can be due to the drug which are used to treat nephrotic syndrome. The main stray of treatment of nephrotic syndrome is steroids and steroids produces some complication or it is the toxicity of the steroid which can lead to complication in a patient of nephrotic syndrome. So, the complication of nephrotic syndrome can be either due to the disease itself which is the nephrotic syndrome itself or it can be due to the drugs which is used in treatment of nephrotic syndrome that is the steroids. At first let us discuss the disease, the nephrotic syndrome itself producing some of the complication. As we have learned in pathophysiology of nephrotic syndrome that the main pathophysiology of nephrotic syndrome is proteinuria and due to proteinuria we will link how the pathophysiology can produce complication in a patient of nephrotic syndrome. We have already learned that there is proteinuria in nephrotic syndrome means proteins are being lost in the urine. So when protein, has be, protein is being lost in the urine, the immunoglobulin which is also a type of protein is lost in the urine. Hence the loss of immunoglobulin IgG can produce infection as a complication in a patient of nephrotic syndrome. What type of infection is common in patient with nephrotic syndrome? It can produce respiratory tract infection, it can produce urinary tract infection, it can produce peritonitis that we have discussed about spontaneous bacterial peritonitis and how it is produced. It can produce soft tissue infections like cellulitis, pharyngulosis and other infection of the kidney like urinary tract infection. So in a patient of nephrotic syndrome, we have always, we have to always suspect infection and take some history regarding infection. How the patient with nephrotic syndrome, which is having superimposed infection will present to us. In addition to the clinical feature of nephrotic syndrome, that is edema, generalized edema and oliguria, patient may also present to us with fever. Fever. And if there is septicemia due to infection, patient may present to us with profound hypotension and tachycardia. So by knowing the signs and symptoms in patient with nephrotic syndrome with superimposed infection, we can diagnose this infection in patient with nephrotic syndrome. The other complication of nephrotic syndrome is due to excess production of coagulation factor. Due to excess production of coagulation factor, there is thrombosis of the vessel. This excess production of coagulation factor as well as there is loss of antithrombin 3 in the urine. Antithrombin is an anticoagulatory factor present in the circulating blood. When this antithrombin 3 is lost in the urine, there is activation, there is spontaneous activation of the coagulation pathway leading to thrombosis of the blood vessel. As well as we have seen in nephrotic syndrome patient, there is increased concentration of lipids. All these factors contribute to thrombosis of the vessel. The thrombosis of the vessel can be arterial thrombosis or venous thrombosis. The venous thrombosis which include 
ren are the renal veins the cerebral veins and the peripheral veins so signs and symptoms of this thrombosis will depend upon the vein which is thrombosed it suppose the peripheral peripheral vein is thrombosed the patient may present to us with claudication and calf muscle pain claudication which is calf muscle pain after walking a short distance there are different gradings of claudication we are not going to discuss the different gradings of claudication here but claudication generally means leg pain or leg cramps or calf muscle pain after wa walking a short distance so if the peripheral veins of the leg are thrombosed blood circulation is impaired in the muscle which lead to ischemic pain in the muscle if the cerebral vein is thrombosed the patient may present with us present to us with headache and other neurological symptoms of stroke can also be present if cerebral vein is thrombosed if the mesenteric artery or mesenteric vein is thrombosed in nephrotic syndrome the patient may present to us with abdominal pain as well as if the renal vein is thrombosed there will be impaired kidney function as well as flank pain can also be present in patient with renal vein thrombosis so thrombosis is one of the complication of nephrotic syndrome and thrombosis the clinical feature of thrombosis will depend upon which vein it is thrombosed in peripheral veins of the leg the symptoms will be the calf muscle pain claudication if the renal vein is thrombosed there will be flank pain along with kidney dysfunction as uh, evident in laboratory kidney function test if the cerebral vein is thrombosed it can be signs and the patient can present to us with signs and symptoms of stroke as well as headache the classical headache known as thunder stroke headache can be present with patient in cerebral vein thrombosis if the mesenteric vein or artery is thrombosed the patient may present to us with abdominal pain so thrombosis can lead to various clinical signs and symptoms in patient with nephrotic syndrome in addition to the symptoms of nephrotic syndrome the third complication which is profound in nephrotic syndrome is renal failure renal failure can occur in patient with nephrotic syndrome it the basic mechanism of renal failure in patient with nephrotic syndrome is that due to edema there is hypovolemia of the systemic circulation and due to hypovolemia less blood flow less blood is reaching to the kidney and this less blood is reducing the gfr and in turn the urine output of the nephrotic syndrome patient so there is hypovolemia and reduced blood supply to the kidney which lead to impaired uh, excretion of the nitrogenous waste product through the kidney which lead to renal failure so there is accumulation of nitrogenous waste product in the circulation due to hypovolemia because less blood is reaching to the kidney and less excretion of nitrogenous waste product so the cause of renal failure in nephrotic syndrome is mainly hypovolemia hypovolemia so hypovolemia is the prerenal cause of renal failure if the person with nephrotic syndrome is having convulsion it can be attributed to electrolyte imbalance due to nephrotic syndrome it can be attributed to electrolyte imbalance due to renal failure there will be electrolyte imbalance which can lead to convulsion in patient with nephrotic syndrome in addition if cerebral vein thrombosis occur convulsion will be one of the clinical feature the other complication due to the nephrotic syndrome itself are the anemia we have already discussed due to loss of transferrin and iron binding protein in the urine there is an anemia due to loss of transferrin in the protein there is anemia now let us discuss the complication which is due to the drug the drug the drug which is used in treatment of nephrotic syndrome that is steroid 
Now the question arises, if steroid is causing so much complication in patient in nephrotic syndrome, then why are we using this drug? Steroid is the mainstay of treatment of a patient in nephrotic syndrome, but there are so many complications by so many complication occurs due to using this drug. So there is balance, the risk, the benefit ratio is more. The benefit is more, the risk of complication is less. So we are having more benefit by using this drug in patient with nephrotic syndrome. So the risk benefit ratio is more for the benefit and less for the complication of the risk. We are using this drug steroid in treatment of nephrotic syndrome. But this doesn't mean that the steroid will not cause complication. There are complications associated with the use of steroid in patient with nephrotic syndrome. We have to identify this complication or we have to monitor the patient who is nef uh, nephrotic syndrome patient for this steroid complication. Whether he or she is having this complication by the steroid, we can monitor, we can evaluate the patient for the steroid complication and we can alter the dose of the steroid while treating this patient and we can manage the complication associated with this drug toxicity. So what are the complications which are associated with steroid use is known as the complication which is associated with steroid use can be remembered as Cushingoid features. The steroid toxicity can be remembered as Cushingoid feature. It is also known as Cushingoid features. So, what is this Cushingoid features? Steroid can cause cataract. Steroid use can cause cataract as well as ulcer, mainly the peptic ulcer. It can lead to skin changes in the form of skin striation, skin striation, thinning of the skin. It can lead to hypertension. Steroid use anywhere, not in nephrotic syndrome, steroid use anywhere can lead to all these features known as cushingoid features. Cushingoid features, this is because of steroid toxicity. Steroid can also cause infection. So you can understand there is loss of immunoglobulin in patient with nephrotic syndrome which is causing infection as well as if we are using steroid, it will further lead to immunosuppression. Steroid is an immunosuppressive drug. So use of steroids along with loss of immunoglobulin makes the patient of nephrotic syndrome prone to infection. It can lead to necrosis, necrosis of the femoral head. Steroid use can lead to glaucoma and osteoporosis infection is more common in patient with steroid use so we are writing it two times it can also cause hyperglycemia diabetes Excess use of steroid can produce these features known as cushingoid features which are cataract, ulcer, skin striation or thinning, hypertension, infection, necrosis of the femoral head, glaucoma, osteoporosis and diabetes. So these are the features of steroid toxicity or complication associated with steroid use in nephrotic syndrome. Now we shall discuss about proteinuria. As we have, as we know that the major pathophysiology behind this nephrotic syndrome is proteinuria. So now let us discuss how this protein in urine is measured. So this is known as quantification quantification. 
quantification of protein urea we can measure the protein in urine by a method known as dipstick method in dipstick method we have an strip and we dip in the urine solution and there are different color coding associated with the strip and based on the change in color we can compare with the standard value and grade it as 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus or 4 plus protein urea 1 plus and 2 plus is mild to moderate protein urea mild to moderate protein urea 3 plus or 4 plus is heavy protein urea is heavy protein urea we can also measure protein in urine by collecting 24-hour urinary protein. But it is practically impossible or it is very difficult to collect a person 24-hour urinary, 24-hour urine and measure the protein in 24-hour urine sample. But if we do so, the 24-hour urinary protein, if we take the sample of 24-hour urinary protein and if we measure the amount of protein in 24-hour urine sample, if we get a value of 100 to 1000 milligram per meter squared per day, the amount of protein in between 100 to 1000 milligram per meter squared per day, then this is known as mild to moderate protein urea. If it is more than 1000 milligram per meter square per day, that is more than 1 milligram, 1 gram per meter square per day, it is known as heavy proteinuria. But it is very difficult to take a 24 hours urine sample. 24 hour urine sample, the value in between 100 to 1000 milligram per meter square per day is known as mild to moderate proteinuria if it is more than 1000 milligram per meter square per day it is heavy proteinuria but it is practically impossible to take 24 hour urine sample and measure the amount of protein present in 24 hour urinary sample so we have a simple technique known as protein is to creatinine ratio protein is to creatinine ratio this protein is to creatinine ratio we have to measure this protein is to creatinine ratio in early early morning first sample early morning first sample and the normal value comes out somewhat the ratio comes out somewhat to be 0.1 if it is in between 0.1 to 2 it is known as mild to moderate proteinuria or and if it is more than 2 the ratio is more than 2 it is a heavy proteinuria so if the ratio increases which means protein the content protein content will in, be increasing and if it is more the if, it, if the ratio is more than 0.2 it is heavy proteinuria and if it is between 0.1 to 2 the ratio between protein is to creatinine in early morning first sample if the ratio is in between 0.1 to 2 it is mild to moderate proteinuria and if it is more than 2 it is heavy proteinuria normal is 0.1 the ratio between protein protein to creatinine in normal is 0.1 there is another term known as protein selectivity protein selectivity what is protein selectivity protein selectivity basically is the ratio of clearance of high molecular high molecular weight protein is to clearance of low molecular weight protein so it's the ratio of clearance means what type of protein is being excreted in the urine is it the high molecular protein or is it the low molecular protein 
the high molecular protein is the immunoglobulin is it the more of the immunoglobulin being excreted in the urine or is it the more of the low molecular weight protein that is albumin is being excreted in the protein if more of immunoglobulin will be in uh, if more of immunoglobulin is being excreted in the protein we call it as high molecular protein is being excreted more in the urine and the ratio is more for high molecular weight protein we call this as there is protein selectivity is less for high molecular weight protein and if low molecular weight protein is more in the urine we call this as selective selective protein urea which means albumin is more excreted in the urine and it is non selective protein urea which means high molecular weight protein is excreted more in the urine the ratio is more for high molecular weight protein in simple language selective protein urea means low molecular weight protein is excreted more in the urine that is albumin is excreted more in the urine so the ratio will decrease for high molecular weight protein is to low molecular weight protein so these are the two points you have to remember one is quantification of protein and other is protein selectivity the ratio of high molecular weight protein is to low molecular weight protein decreases in minimal change nephrotic syndrome which means albumin is being excreted more than immunoglobulin which means the ratio is decreasing for high molecular weight protein is to low molecular weight protein and when the ratio is increased for high molecular weight protein to low molecular weight protein it is seen in nephrotic syndrome with significant lesion so after discussing complication and linking with pathophysiology now let us understand what are the investigation done in a patient of nephrotic syndrome the investigation we do in a patient of nephrotic syndrome is to diagnose the patient whether he is suffering from nephrotic syndrome or some other disease or there are different variants of nephrotic syndrome whether it is minimal change nephrotic syndrome or nephrotic syndrome with significant lesion we have to diagnose the patient of nephrotic syndrome based on our investigation we have to do investigation also to look for complication so for diagnosing for diagnosis for diagnosis what are are the investigation we are planning will start from as there is protein urea we will look for protein in urine we have to do complete examination of urine that is urinary examination urine examination and we have to look for rbc cast in urine we have to look for protein in urine if rbc cast or rbc is present in urine we can say that this is is nephrotic syndrome with significant lesion because i told you earlier in minimal change nephrotic syndrome there is less um, there is no hematuria there is rarely hematuria present but in nephrotic syndrome with significant lesion there can be hematuria we have to look for the protein content in urine we have to also look for as i told you there is protein urea and protein urea lead to hypoalbuminemia so we have we can check serum albumin serum albumin level that is high in high pro nephrotic syndrome there is hypoalbuminemia though so serum albumin level will be decreased as i told you there is production of lipid so we can check serum cholesterol level which we will find to be increased we can look for kidney function test and if we are suspecting infection we can do 
culture and sensitivity of the urine we can also look for serum c3 level as i told you serum c3 level guide us help us differentiate between nephrotic syndrome with significant lesion or minimal change nephrotic syndrome in minimal change nephrotic syndrome there is no deposition of complement in the basement membrane of the glomerulus unit so normal serum there is normal serum level but in nephrotic syndrome with significant lesion all the serum complement are being deposited in the basement membrane so when you check the serum complement level it will be decreased so serum c3 level or serum complement level help us guide to differentiate between nephrotic syndrome with significant lesion as well as minimal change nephrotic syndrome if the nephrotic syndrome is an idiopathic nephrotic syndrome that is primary nephrotic syndrome there will be no other secondary cause associated with nephrotic syndrome but we may never know that there is whether or not there is a secondary cause for this nephrotic syndrome so if we suspect through our history and examination that this patient of nephrotic syndrome is not an idiopathic nephrotic syndrome but but it is due to some other disease which has also led to nephrotic syndrome then we have to investigate for that secondary cause of nephrotic syndrome for investigating the secondary cause of nephrotic syndrome based on our history and examination so we can suspect which disease may be associated with this nephrotic syndrome if you are looking at signs and symptoms of systemic lupus erythromatosis then we have to investigate the patients for systemic lupus erythromatosis patient with nephrotic syndrome having rash and joint pain we can suspect the patient is having systemic lupus erythromatosis and systemic lupus erythromatosis has caused nephrotic syndrome in this patient if the patient is having jaundice and other signs of hepatitis then we have to investigate the patients for hepatitis b as well as hepatitis c so these are the investigation we have to do to diagnose a patient of nephrotic syndrome and based on this diagnosis we can classify if the patient is having minimal change nephrotic syndrome or nephrotic syndrome with significant lesion whether the nephrotic syndrome is a primary or idiopathic nephrotic syndrome or whether the patient is having a secondary cause which is leading to nephrotic syndrome based on this much investigation if we are not able to conclude the diagnosis of nephrotic syndrome then we have to go for renal biopsy renal biopsy will confirm our diagnosis of nephrotic syndrome but in minimal change nephrotic syndrome we are not going to do a biopsy of the kidney to make our diagnosis based on clinical feature examination and some investigation which i have mentioned up to 0.6 can help us diagnose a patient of minimal change nephrotic syndrome as well as nephrotic syndrome with significant lesion so who are the patient in which we are going to do a renal biopsy this will we will discuss in our management part if the patient is not responding to steroid or if the patient is not uh, if the patient is having proteinuria for long duration and is not responding to steroid if the patient kidney function is deteriorating so we can go for renal biopsy to find out actually what the cause is leading to all these symptoms which is not being able which we are not being able to treat by steroid use so these are the investigation we have to do for diagnosis of a patient in a nephrotic syndrome now for associated complication investigation to look for complication if there is complication like anemia we have to investigate the patient for anemia doing complete blood count reticulocyte count esr and all other parameter for diagnosing anemia if the patient is having renal function deterioration we have to do kidney function test or renal function test to find out or to identify the complication that is renal failure 
if there is thrombosis of the any artery and vein then we can do doppler study or mr angiography to find out thrombosis if we are finding a clinical signs and symptoms of thrombosis which i have already discussed then we shall go for identifying this thrombosis which artery or which vein is thrombosed by doing doppler study and mr angiography according to our convenient if we are suspecting ascites and spontaneous bacterial peritonitis then we can go for peritoneal tapping of the ascitic fluid and send it for culture and sensitivity so these are the investigation we can do in a patient of nephrotic syndrome so to sum up the investigation which are done in a patient of nephrotic syndrome are for diagnosing the disease and for identifying the complication of the disease thank you